All right, let's talk about layers in a uh, grease pencil. Um, starting it with a blank um, stroke right here. We're in draw mode and let's go to our grease pencil stroke layer uh, property panel, sorry. By default, you have two layers. Uh, if you use, uh, if you uh, add a blank one, you get one. It doesn't really matter. These are just kind of pre-made layers for you. So think of this as layers in Photoshop, or if you're an old school uh, animator, these are the glass plane layers. Or if you're a cell shade uh, animation, uh, it's uh, your foreground background, okay? So um, they're named as lines and fills. So uh, Blender uh, is assuming, uh, you know, the top one right here, you want to be your line art, and then the bottom one is your fill color, all right? So uh, to just kind of demonstrate the order of things, uh, I'm going to go to lines right here and I'm going to select, let's say a uh, solid fill and then let's um, give it a this um, um, color, right? And then I'm just going to um, did I select that color? Okay, I did not double click. There we go. All right, so this is um, the lines. Layer. All right, now I'm going to lock that, select the fills, okay? And we're gonna do the exact same thing pick a different color and as you can see it's at the back all right so let's hide the lines color so that's how you hide them um, it's important you lock um, uh, so that you don't draw accidentally on any layers you don't mean to okay so all right so I'm going to the fills layer right here I'm gonna go back to my stroke just so that I can give this a name this is the fills uh, draw it a little bit here at the bottom so you can see it okay let's turn that back on all right so what are the order of things here um, whatever's on top is the foreground okay anything below would be background the very bottom one is the very back background everything in between is sandwich so I can add another one GP layer we call this one mid okay I'm gonna lock fills okay and uh, I'm gonna go to mid right now and let's do the exact same thing let's change our color to yellow okay all right so it's sandwich in between and uh once we uh you can leave those locked and you can move their position so right here would be your uh, 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 layering uh, up and down or top and bottom okay you can't just drag them so if i wanted my mid to be the very top one i'll move it in there until it goes in and then let's put them back to the correct order again mids uh sorry lines is on top mids in the middle and then uh oh did i mess that up okay yeah uh feel <laughs> this goes to the bottom there we go all right so that's the order of uh um if uh on you know originally so we just put them back and that's how you change those order uh we have the masking right here we have we'll have a separate lesson just for masking and uh that's how you uh uh, turn off visibility on layer keep in mind it will still render this is just you not seeing it here okay and uh, this is how you lock them this is how you can add and then get rid of layers um, what else here uh, that's pretty much it for layers um, just be careful with layers uh, so you don't um, uh, go too crazy on a particular single stroke because it eats a lot of memory and you could crash easily so the way we do it in class is uh, 
we sometimes use multiple grease pencil object and uh, so we can minimize the layer per stroke because you can turn off an entire stroke like so and then only show uh, particular ones and then so you uh, you know grease pencil runs a little bit more smooth uh, memory management is key uh, otherwise you will crash like crazy uh, when you have very complex scene okay all right so that's layers uh, kind of in a nutshell uh, until we get into masking lesson then we'll explore more of what's in here all right so uh, next would be onion skin okay so we'll keep our um, you know let's start another one all right so onion skin we have our layers lines and fills so let's just kind of uh, do some drawing here really simple uh, I'm gonna draw like a circle all right and then we'll go to our sculpt I want the um, uh, not the strength uh, thickness all right I do want to increase the thickness on this one all right and it's a close uh, uh, outline normally what we do is uh, we would get our paint bucket vertex color and then we want to uh, what am i doing wrong here uh, oh yeah sorry i'm in a stroke solid fill okay there we go all right so you can see here it didn't really uh go underneath right uh, it uh, filled the color but it ate away in some of the outline so let's click and do if you want your fill to be behind you have to turn this on this is to uh, uh, draw on back okay so now if I fill this one all right it's going to the back however your ability now uh, to separate the two uh, line art and fill color you're kind of limited because you put everything inside lines a uh, layer okay so one way to kind of have a little bit more freedom but it's more work uh, in the long run but you have a lot of editing uh, ability is to separate the two so you can go to fills right here lock uh, lines and when you do your paint bucket on this one, you have them on two separate layers. Okay. So, and this is what's recommend on more complex stuff because here you can add all sorts of stuff. Um, let's say I'm still um, solid veal. Um, which color is this? Um, that one right there. Let's see, we want to go a shade lighter for highlight. Okay and uh, let's um i want to create a highlight right here okay oh did i draw it on back let me click undo because <laughs> it drew it behind it we no longer need the draw on back because our outline is a front okay so that could be something where you don't want to modify stuff later on, but still, if you want the ultimate kind of control to your outline, your line art, uh, shadow, and highlight, you want multiple layers on those, okay? You would want to put your shadow on one, and you want to put your highlight on one, you want to put your fill color on one. Again, these are on simple... Um, uh, illustration for your animation uh, anything more complex I mean if you start doing cross hatching and all that for detailing uh, we're talking about a different beast okay so layer control is important all right so now that we have all this stuff here let me let's go to onion skin right so um, if I uh, select my uh, my line right there okay and you don't do fill color until you're done with all your outline. All right. So let's just kind of hide that and lock it. Okay. Onion skin. So this is animation. So uh, onion skin simply tells, uh, you know, back in like cell shading, you have transparent paper. 
uh, celluloid paper uh, where you can see the background and the foreground or even the art of flipping it you know you can see master animators they got um, their left hand if they're right-handed they've got all their fingers uh, on each uh, layer or page and they could flip them uh, so they could see the motion okay so we do the same thing here we just simply scrub our animation like so okay so let's do some animation here let's make this simple um, I'm gonna grab the uh, so uh, let's uh, change our timeline to just 24 and let's increase our dope sheet a little bit and let's isolate just 24 frames here which is um, equals to one second that's default okay on our class anyway uh, let me go let's say frame uh, 4 right here I want to move this to the right okay there you go so now we got our um, oh did I uh, anyway it's probably a bad idea because uh, I did I did sculpt this one all right um, okay there it is um, it's fairly thin because it didn't have the sculpting in there or did I not copy everything okay let me select everything that's probably what I did wrong on one okay and then we go to frame four let's move the whole thing here we go and then on frame eight we go down here so automatically you get a copy of the drawing um, when you use a transform tool okay so we have three keyframes here okay but you can see there's onion skin okay it shows you right here this is frame one and this is frame eight so you get the before and after okay let's put some in between okay so go back to frame one I'm gonna go frame two here I'm gonna add uh, in between right there and then when we go to frame um, four we go to frame six right here I put an in between right here all right, so what we're seeing right now is just one frame before and after. So let's go to our onion skin. It's just below layers. And there it is right here. You can change the opacity so you can make it as opaque as, um, as the original lines. Okay. And you can also set how many frames you see before and after. So if I put here, since we have uh, keyframes uh, sandwiched between, if I put it on two and two, you actually see your motion pad. Okay. So you could see here what you uh, your motion um, or your drawing before and after. You can also change the color. Uh, where's my uh, uh, viewport display? Where do they put all this now? Uh, custom color, sorry, right there. Um, you can change it to uh, whatever you want. Okay, I just usually leave this um, default or. Sometimes when we have a projector issue, uh, we want to make sure that this one is really bright. So we go red before and then uh, green after, but really bright green. Okay, just so that no question which one is before and after. You don't need to scrub your um, your timeline. Okay, so that's uh, onion skin and you can turn this off uh, by um, uh, changing your keyframes before and after to zero or you can lower the opacity until they disappear all right so very useful for when you are trying to get your spacing and your timing uh, correctly